So can we start? Uh, so would you explain about yourself and your college experience? Uh, so far, you have worked on it. Okay, sure. So uh, basically, I'm from uh, uh, that is in Delhi. And uh, as per my experience, uh, overall, uh, I have more than three years of experience in development. And uh, in, uh, I mean, so I mostly work on front end only. And uh, uh, and currently, I'm using uh, React JS. So in React JS, uh, more than I have uh, more than two years of experience. And uh, in my uh, previous project, uh, it was like of uh, uh, labor, labor uh, booking system where uh, uh, like uh, it was a small type of project, by the way. So I used uh, the Google Sheet to store the data uh, uh, of the labors. So anyone can uh, search uh, the labors data for the booking and they can uh, contact uh, mm -hmm. to them directly. So like this, it was a project. Okay, okay, good to hear that. So we'll start uh, with the interview now. So we'll start from basic, uh, I mean, uh, we'll start from HTML itself. So uh, what is event bubbling and uh, event looping? Event bubbling and event looping, loop, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So in event bubbling, uh, that means uh, I can give a, one example for it. Uh, I don't know the exact uh, definition for it, actually. So let's suppose... Uh, yeah, sure. I, I have uh, multiple uh, uh, elements uh, like uh, one each parent and inside it uh, the child and inside it uh, sub child. So when we click on the sub child, the uh, if there are events on the parent and child and the sub child, so all the events will be called. So that is uh, uh, the event bubbling. And to prevent it, uh, we have uh, the stop uh, propagation. So we can use that to stop it. And uh, in uh, event loop, uh, that means, as we know, uh, that uh, JavaScript is a single thread language. So that means uh, the moving the events from the uh, task to the uh, task uh, queue to the call stack. So you see the process uh, called, uh, I mean, event loop. So what is semantic tags in HTML? Well, semantic, uh, uh, like um, semantic tags in HTML uh, that are um, easily uh, readable by us and uh, also uh, uh, like uh, uh, by the browser, I mean. So uh, I can mm -hmm. give one, uh, a few examples for it, like we have a header. So it is easily readable that it, it, is, it should be the part of the header and footer for the footer mm -hmm. and uh, a side we have for the sidebar. Also we have an article. So these are the uh, semantic okay. elements. Oh, okay. So we'll jump on to the CSS now. So what is box model? Okay, so box model, uh, I know about it, but I don't know uh, about the uh, exact definition for it. Let uh, I can um, uh, tell you one example, like uh, uh, any element uh, that we have, and uh, when we uh, inspect element uh, in our browser, so uh, on, uh, on uh, in the browser, we can see the box model uh, there are uh, in uh, I mean, uh, like uh, it has it has the combination of the um, uh, margin and uh, padding and uh, border. Okay, one more thing. Yeah. Okay, no issues. So, uh, uh, have you heard with uh, property called visibility? Uh, yes. Okay, what is the difference between visibility hidden and display none? So in uh, visibility hidden, uh, that means uh, the element will uh, uh, still, uh, it will hold the place of it and uh, in, but it will be hidden, uh, it uh, cannot be seen. But in display none, it will, uh, uh, it will be hidden also and uh, it will uh, store, uh, also remove the uh, place of it. Okay. Completely hidden, I mean. Hidden, it will be hidden or it will be entire element itself will not be available in our bro, uh, element, I mean, console, that console. Right. It will what be completely uh, hidden, I mean. Completely hidden, it will not so. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, what is display flex? Flex, uh, like, uh, uh, it is uh, mainly... Have you worked with flex? Have you worked with flex? Uh, no, actually, uh, and nowadays uh, we have many libraries, so uh, I use mm -hmm. those libraries actually, but I can tell a bit uh, about it. So it is uh, mainly used to uh, make the uh, responsive the elements. I mean, to make the device okay. friendly application. Okay, so what is pseudo classes and pseudo elements? Pseudo classes and pseudo elements. 
Pseudo classes. Pseudo classes. I'm confused, but uh, I know about these pseudo uh, elements. Like we have, I can example uh, give one uh, example. Like uh, we have uh, hover and uh, active. Mm -hmm. So these are the pseudo elements. Okay. Okay. So like you said, like uh, in the set box model, if we have a, a element, also it will be having a margin padding and, and uh, context, uh, right? Border, everything, right? Mm -hmm. So what is the difference between margin and a padding? So a uh, margin, that means um, uh, it, it, it uh, uh, like in, uh, I can, you can say, we can say like uh, it increases uh, the uh, spaces on the outside of the element and in padding uh, it uh, increases the uh, space inside the uh, element Okay, so I have two elements. I mean I have two deals now. So both are actually parallel okay. I need to increase the space between two elements now. So which will be efficient? I mean if, if you adjust the margin will be efficient or padding is efficient margin Why is that so? Because it uh, makes the uh, spacing outside of the element. That's why. Okay. Uh huh. Okay. Good. Okay. We'll jump on to JavaScript then. So, what is called closure? Closure. Uh, that means uh, like uh, uh, let's suppose I have uh, two function. One is a parent and one is a child inside uh, that function. I mean, so the child function will have access to the um, uh, parent functions or variables. So, that can you write the example? Example in the chat. Yes. Can yeah. I share my screen so it would be better? Yeah, no issues. You can share. Yeah. So, is it visible now? Uh, yep, it is visible. Okay, so let's suppose I will write a function, uh, function parent. a variable uh, like uh, any any variable like uh, name option and inside it uh, I will have another variable uh, that is a function child I will name it then Here we can see it has the access to the uh, parents variable. Okay. So if we put uh, the another variable uh, with a name, so it will consider the child one. Yeah, can you write the another variable inside the child function? If you if you make it as a var both, what will happen? Uh, it will be same result. Yeah, my show. Yes, here you can see. Okay, then what is the difference between var and lit? Okay, so in uh, like uh, so both can be reassigned by the way, but uh, in var uh, what happens like uh, while. Well, uh, executing the compiler sets uh, the default memory on it that is um, that is undefined but uh, in uh, late it uh, does not set any uh, it does not initialize with uh, any memory so it gives if we try to uh, I mean access the late variable uh, before uh, the assigning uh, it will be a reference error and in the in case of a variable uh, in case of where uh, it will be undefined Okay, so what is hoisting? Uh, as I said, uh, like um, while executing um, the compiler sets, uh, 
uh, the default uh, compiler sets the default memory to the uh, variables and the functions. So, uh, so okay. uh, like uh, in where uh, it sets, as I said, uh, it sets the default value undefined, and uh, in, for the latent const, it does not uh, any slash with any value. That's why it uh, uh, shows the error. Okay. Okay. Okay, so out uh, out of five, how good are you in React? Uh, four, I can say. Okay. Uh, let me share you a uh, Fiddle link. Okay. So, in this link, uh, can you add a button? And uh, there is already a text box available there. If I type like uh, change color, it has to change the color of the button. Can you do the code for that? Okay, so it's a JS fiddle. Yeah, JS fiddle. Create a button, and if I type anything right, so can you can you check the output before? Okay. Actually, I'm not that much familiar with JS Fiddle, so that's why I uh, don't know where uh, the output will be. Mm -hmm. oh, let me check it. Can I copy to uh, or code sandbox? Yeah, you can copy to sandbox. That is also fine. Okay. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, yeah, I'm able to hear you. Yeah. Okay. Let me see my screen again. I guess uh, there was a network issue, I think, by my side. Yeah, yeah no issues. So as I understand, like uh, you are telling, uh, inside the input box, uh, when you uh, write the change color, so uh, the button color uh, should be changed, right? Yeah. Ring. So uh, like uh, uh, in that case, uh, we can uh, uh, like uh, put uh, one condition here. So let's suppose uh, if uh, mm -hmm. uh, name, because we are storing the name here, so if it is the change color, then I can uh, one uh, I can uh, like uh, make another state here for the color. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then uh, we can set uh, the color. Let's suppose whatever color. Uh, I mean, mm -hmm. not this, like this not uh, set state. And then the color of it. Let's suppose uh, I put the red here. So mm -hmm. later uh, I can extract it from here the color and we can change the button color of it uh, using this style and uh, background color like this.
okay so here i have what more question here so uh, this change event so i mean the type uh, text box change event will trigger so for single every value right so, I, i mean uh, if i click for change color itself if i click uh, if i enter c h a then every time that this change event will trigger is it correct yes right how do you prevent that i i mean uh, i need to uh, trigger this event only if i input change color is there any way to prevent that oh uh, yes oh like uh, one uh, solution i forget the name of it but i guess uh, using the debouncing but i'm not sure uh, about it debouncing yeah yeah okay good thank you okay good so what is redux so in redux uh, uh, like uh, it is basically used to uh, store the state uh, um, i mean uh, to make the uh, uh, available state globally mm-hmm. so it will be ac- accessible to the all component so basically there are okay. uh, uh, um, the main thing is a uh, reducer that um, that has the initial value and uh, that takes uh, the type so uh, and also um, like there is a uh, uh, we need to uh, declare uh, i mean uh, action for it so when we uh, dispatch the action uh, the state of uh, our state will be changed accordingly and to mm-hmm. make the data available in our component we have the uh, connect uh, higher order uh, it is a higher order function so uh, using connect uh, we can uh, uh, we need to pass uh, two things there like uh, one is uh, map uh, state to props and uh, map dispatch to props so uh, map in map dispatch to props we can write our uh, action to dispatch and in map state to props uh, we can uh, use the selector to fetch the data uh, uh, from the uh, uh, i mean globally available state okay good yeah. okay uh, so have you worked with node js and mongodb actually uh, i'm mostly work on front end but uh, don't know why okay. uh, it is put on the mon stack but i'm i'm uh, quite interested learning on it so i have basic uh, knowledge in node js okay mm-hmm. so i'm good with the interview so uh, since uh, with the front end i'm okay with you with your interview so do you have any question for me uh yes by the way if i get selected yeah. what type of project i'll be working on and will i get a chance to work on back end also because i'm curious to learn it yeah of course of course you can get a chance to work on back end because uh, here we are expecting like a person who to handle both front end as well as well as the back end so you might have many chances to work with back end as well